Our presentation is about Ellis Island. Uh, we went in last week and took a tour, and uh, we're going to describe some of the things that we found out. First, Ray's and I talk about the process, what it was like for the immigrants to go through Ellis Island. And then the Melissa talk about her family experiment doing research into her background. Okay, so let's go to Ray's first. Hi, I'm going to talk about the first part of the process of going through Ellis Island, the different stages that the immigrants had to go through. Okay, first, one important thing to remember is that Ellis was only used for the poorest immigrants, the third class passenger. The first and the second class passenger were processed on the ship. Then they were taken to the dock when they got off. And then the ship was still on to Ellis Island with the third class passengers still on board. When they finally landed at Ellis Island, they put on all the clothes they all because they were allowed to bring in only one bag with the possession from the own country. People brought in people brought in all kind of things like you could see musical instrument or samovars pots for making tea. Some people brought earth from the old country too or plants, vice for example for growing grapes. Then the first lady got to the dining hall where they were giving a, a meal that it would pay five for a steamship company. People who came through Ellis Islands always remember the meal. The food was apparently quite good, but it was also strange for many of them. Some people had never tasted ice cream or seen an orange or banana, for example. And then after that, the inspection began and um, Arnie going to tell you about that part. Arnie? Thank you. Okay, uh, after the meal, the passenger would leave a bag and go up to the staircase to the great hall. And as they walk past, the inspector would watch them carefully to see if they were weak or sick. If someone was sick, they would send them to the hospital. There was a hospital in Ellis Island as well until they got better. They also were detained children, young women and old people traveling alone. About 20% of people were held back, often for health reasons, but more Released after a day or two, or when someone came to pick them up. In the great hall, they waited alive for hours, sometimes as long as five hours. They were crowded together and they were often very hot and very loud, you can imagine. As many as 2,000 people all talking in so many languages. Then, when you finally got to the top of the line, the inspector when then when you finally got to the top of the line, the inspector asked them questions like, "Where you come from? Where you going? Is somebody waiting for you?" That's kind of thing. And there was a social worker and interpreter waiting with inspector, like uh, helping people who needed to look at relatives or whatever. Once you got past that part, the question. People would go into one of three lanes behind the inspector. The first lane was for the extension center if you were being held back. The second lane was for the railroad ticket office, for the train station. And the third lane was down to the stairs to the area of people are waiting. There was a post there that's what called um, the kissing post because that's what the scene of so many reunions. Husband met a wives and father met a children they haven't seen in years and then the immigrants went off to start a new life. So now I'm gonna let the Melissa talk about her family experiment tracing their ancestor. Well, my great grandfather came in from Ireland, and my aunt Cho actually used uh, Alice Island record to do research and find out where it came from. So um, I'm gonna talk a bit about that. Uh, basically, what I have in Ellis Island is the ship records and uh, the immigration information of every arriving passenger with the, like the date of the came in, uh, the age, and the town they came from. So, uh, if you know, for example, uh, your ancestor name, uh, did you arrive or where he or she came from, uh, you can look them up. So that's what we did. Uh, my aunt Jo wanted to know more about her grandfather, uh, my great grandfather. He died before I was born, but apparently he was a great musician. He played a fiddle and sang at a family event. Well, John knew that he came from Cork in Ireland, but she didn't know where in Cork because he never spoke about it. So. Um, so John went to Ellis Island Records and she found my great grandfather's name and to give the name of the town where it came from. 
So she went to the islands and visited the town a couple of years ago. She got more information when she was there, and eventually she found a living relative, a cousin, that she didn't know she had. It was great because she always wanted to know more about where the red feather to come from. So uh, that's what we have to have for. But we hope that you enjoy our presentation. Thank you.